Welcome to our channel, Dale Carnegie Famous Book Summary on How to Win Friends and Influence People. Do you want to win friends and influence people? It all begins with a simple smile. That's right, a smile. It's such a basic act, yet it carries an immense amount of power. Picture this. You're walking into a room full of strangers, and you're greeted with warm, welcoming smiles. Instantly, you feel a sense of ease and acceptance, right? That's the magic of a smile. A smile doesn't just make others feel comfortable, it's a silent introduction, a universal sign of goodwill. It's a bridge that spans linguistic and cultural barriers, an emblem of positivity that radiates out and draws people in. It's a potent tool that can transform a moment, a relationship, even an entire atmosphere. But remember, a smile is more than just a facial expression. It's a reflection of your attitude, a symbol of your willingness to connect with others. So let your smile be genuine, let it be frequent, let it be you. Remember, your smile is a powerful tool for building connections. Use it wisely. What's the secret to making people feel valued? It's giving honest and sincere appreciation. Imagine you're feeling down and someone takes the time to genuinely acknowledge something you've done well. It's a small gesture, but it has the power to turn your day around, doesn't it? That's the impact of heartfelt appreciation. Appreciation is a universal language. It transcends boundaries, breaks down walls, and builds bridges between people. It's a nod to the goodness in others, a recognition of their worth, and a validation of their efforts. Before we proceed further, if you're finding value in this content, don't forget to subscribe, click the bell icon for notifications, hit the like button, and leave your thoughts in the comment section. We appreciate your engagement and love hearing from you. Continuing on, when we express appreciation, we're not just acknowledging someone's actions or qualities, we're uplifting their spirits and igniting their motivation. But here's the thing about appreciation. It has to be sincere and specific. Generic compliments, while nice, don't carry the same weight as personalized praise. It's the difference between saying great job and I was really impressed by how you handled that situation. Your calmness and quick thinking made all the difference. You see the impact of the latter? It tells the person exactly what they did well, making the praise more meaningful and memorable. And remember, appreciation doesn't always have to be about grand gestures or achievements. It could be as simple as acknowledging someone's consistent punctuality, their ability to make you laugh, or their knack for finding solutions. It's about noticing the small things that often go unappreciated and bringing them to light. Now here's a challenge for you. The next time you interact with someone, find something specific to appreciate about them. It could be your colleague, your friend, or even a stranger. You'll be surprised at how this act of recognition can brighten their day and yours too. Appreciation is like a mirror. When you give it out, it reflects back to you. It strengthens relationships, builds trust, and fosters a positive environment. So let's make a conscious effort to practice the art of appreciation, to see the good in others and to acknowledge it, to uplift and inspire through our words. As Dale Carnegie said, be hearty in your approbation and lavish in your praise. Let's make that our mantra. Let's make the world a little brighter, one act of appreciation at a time. Want to really connect with people? Then you must become a good listener. This isn't just a sage piece of advice, it's a vital part of building strong relationships. In fact, it's the cornerstone of the principles outlined in Dale Carnegie's influential book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Active listening is more than just waiting for your turn to speak. It means truly engaging with what the other person is saying. It's about understanding their words, their tone, and their emotions. It's about being present in the conversation, not just physically, but mentally and emotionally as well. When we actively listen, we show the other person that we value their input. We make them feel heard and understood. And this, in turn, opens the door to deeper, more meaningful connections. It helps us to see things from their perspective, to walk in their shoes, and to empathize with their feelings. Active listening also helps us learn more about the other person. What are their interests, their dreams, their fears? By paying attention to these details, we can better understand them and in doing so, better connect with them. But how do you become a good listener? It starts with showing genuine interest in the other person. Ask open-ended questions. Encourage them to share more about themselves. Show empathy when they talk about their struggles. Celebrate with them when they share their triumphs. And remember, good listening isn't about agreeing with everything the other person says. It's about understanding their perspective, even if it's different from yours. 
It's about finding common ground, even in disagreement. Finally, don't forget to respond thoughtfully. This shows that you're not just hearing their words, but truly taking them to heart. Your responses should reflect your understanding and appreciation of their viewpoint. So the next time you're in a conversation, try to really listen. Don't just hear the words. Understand the emotions, the nuances, the unspoken feelings. Because when it comes to building strong connections, listening is more than just hearing, it's about understanding. How do you make someone feel important? Show them respect. Respect is not merely a word, but a powerful tool that can transform our relationships and conversations. In the grand tapestry of human interaction, respect serves as the golden thread, connecting us on a deeper level, fostering understanding and creating a positive environment. But what does it mean to show respect? It's more than just being polite or observing social niceties. True respect involves acknowledging and valuing the opinions and perspectives of others. It's about listening without judgment, validating the experiences of others, and showing empathy. It's about treating others as equals, recognizing their inherent worth, and appreciating the unique insights they bring to the table. When we show respect, we're sending a clear message. I see you. I value you. Your opinion matters to me. This kind of validation can be incredibly empowering. It can make people feel seen, heard, and most importantly, important. Respect also plays a crucial role in fostering more productive conversations. When we respect the opinions of others, even when we disagree, we open the door to understanding and compromise. We create a safe space for dialogue, where ideas can be exchanged freely and everyone's perspective is valued. This kind of mutual respect can lead to deeper connections, greater collaboration, and more meaningful conversations. In the words of Dale Carnegie, give the other person a fine reputation to live up to. When we show respect, we're also setting a positive expectation. We're giving others a reason to rise to the occasion, to embody the best version of themselves. We're not just making them feel important, we're inspiring them to be important. So the next time you find yourself in a conversation, remember the power of respect. Listen with an open mind, validate the experiences of others, and acknowledge their opinions. Show them that they are important, that they are valued. Remember, everyone wants to feel important. Show respect and you'll win friends. Want to truly understand people? Try honestly to see things from their point of view. That's the heart of empathy, the ability to step outside of our own perspective and experience the world as others do. It's a simple concept, but it's a profound one, and it can revolutionize the way we communicate and connect with others. Now, when we speak of empathy, we're not talking about pity or sympathy. These are passive emotions, ones that allow us to observe from a distance. Empathy, on the other hand, is active. It requires us to immerse ourselves in another's experience, to feel their joys and their struggles as if they were our own. It's about understanding, not just observing. But why is empathy so important? Well, consider this. When we understand others, we can better anticipate their needs and respond effectively. We can also avoid misunderstandings that can lead to conflict. Empathy allows us to navigate social situations with grace and tact, making our interactions smoother and more enjoyable. Moreover, empathy fosters a deeper connection with others. When someone feels understood, they feel seen, heard, and valued. This strengthens the bond between individuals, building trust and fostering mutual respect. But how can we cultivate this quality? One way is by actively listening to others. This means not just hearing their words, but also paying attention to their emotions and body language. It means asking thoughtful questions and showing genuine interest in their responses. Another way is by practicing perspective taking. This requires us to imagine ourselves in another's shoes, to consider their thoughts, feelings, and motivations. It's a mental exercise, but a valuable one, as it can broaden our understanding and enrich our worldview. In conclusion, empathy is not just about understanding others, it's about enriching our own lives as well. It allows us to form deeper connections, navigate social situations with ease, and become more compassionate individuals. Empathy is the key to influence, understand others, and they'll be more likely to understand you. Want to motivate people to take action? Appeal to their nobler motives. We all have a higher sense of purpose, a set of values and ideals that we hold dear. These are our nobler motives. They are the guiding light that directs our actions and decisions. When we appeal to these nobler motives, we can inspire others to take action, to go beyond their comfort zones and to strive for greatness. Take, for example, the case of a teacher trying to motivate her students to study harder. Instead of simply telling them to study for the sake of passing the test, 
she could appeal to their desire to learn, their curiosity about the world, or their ambition to make a difference. She could inspire them with stories of great individuals who, through their knowledge and hard work, have changed the world. In doing so, she's not just pushing them to study, she's inspiring them to embrace the nobility of learning. Or consider the case of a manager trying to motivate his team to reach their sales targets. He could appeal to their sense of competition, their desire to be the best, or their ambition to contribute to the company's success. He could inspire them with the vision of the company, how their work contributes to its mission, and how their efforts make a difference. In doing so, he's not just pushing them to sell, he's inspiring them to be part of something bigger, something noble. This approach works because it taps into the inherent desire of every person to do something meaningful, to contribute to a cause greater than themselves. It's not about manipulation or coercion, but about inspiration and empowerment. It's about helping others see the nobility in their actions, the value in their contributions, and the impact they can make. So the next time you want to inspire someone to take action, remember to appeal to their nobler motives. Show them the bigger picture, the higher purpose, the nobler cause. Inspire them with a vision that resonates with their values and ideals. Inspire others by appealing to their higher motives. That's how you win friends and influence people. How do you push people to achieve more? Throw down a challenge. Indeed, the power of challenge is an incredible tool in motivating others. It's like a spark that ignites the flame of aspiration, pushing us to stretch our limits and reach new heights. But what makes a challenge so compelling? Well, challenges are like the uncharted territories of our potential. They beckon us to explore the unknown, to push beyond what we thought was possible. They stir a sense of intrigue, a curiosity that whispers, can I really do this? And often it's this curiosity that drives us to take action. But a challenge isn't just about the daunting task ahead, it's about the opportunity for growth that it presents. Each challenge is a stepping stone, a chance to learn, to grow, to evolve. It's an invitation to step out of our comfort zones and venture into the realm of the extraordinary. And it's this potential for growth that makes challenges so enticing. Presenting opportunities for growth can encourage people to step up and achieve more. When we frame challenges as opportunities, we shift the focus from the difficulty of the task to the rewards of overcoming it. We inspire people not just to face the challenge, but to embrace it, to revel in it. And this is where the magic happens. When we embrace challenges, we unlock our potential. We discover strengths we never knew we had, abilities we never thought we possessed. We grow, not just in skill, but in character, resilience, and self-belief. So, how do you use challenges to influence others? Well, it's all about how you frame it. Don't just throw down a challenge. Present it as an opportunity, an adventure waiting to be embarked upon. Inspire people with the potential for growth, the chance to become more than they are today. Remember, challenges aren't about proving who's better or stronger, they're about self-improvement, about becoming the best version of ourselves. So when you present a challenge, make sure it's an invitation to grow, a call to evolve. Challenges aren't just about competition, they're opportunities for growth, use them wisely to influence others. So, how do you win friends and influence people? A question that may have seemed daunting at first, yet as we've journeyed through Dale Carnegie's timeless wisdom, we've discovered that the answer lies in simple yet profound principles. We started with the power of a smile, a universal sign of goodwill. A smile can break barriers, create connections, and set the stage for positive interactions. It's the simplest way to make a great first impression. Then, we moved on to the art of appreciation. Genuine praise and recognition can act as a catalyst, initiating a cycle of positivity. Remember, the key is sincerity. Complement the qualities that truly stand out, and you'll find people drawn to your authenticity. Next, we explored the importance of active listening. By showing genuine interest in what others have to say, we create an environment of respect and mutual understanding. This not only strengthens our relationships but also gives us a deeper understanding of the world around us. We also discussed the power of respect. By valuing others and making them feel important, we build trust and rapport. No matter the disagreements, maintaining respect for differing opinions fosters a healthy exchange of ideas. We then delved into the art of seeing through others' eyes. Empathy allows us to understand different perspectives and makes us more compassionate and considerate individuals. Next, we explored how to inspire action. By appealing to nobler motives and dramatizing our ideas, we can stir enthusiasm and motivate others to strive for more. Finally, 
we discovered the power of a challenge. By presenting opportunities for growth, we encourage others to step out of their comfort zones and achieve their full potential. In essence, the art of winning friends and influencing people is not about manipulation or deceit. It's about understanding, respecting, and valuing others. It's about creating a positive environment where everyone feels heard, appreciated, and encouraged to grow. Remember, the art of winning friends and influencing people is about understanding, respecting, and valuing others. Practice these principles and watch your relationships flourish.